Sagittarius, hello and welcome to your weekly reading for the week of the 3rd of November through to the 10th. You guys are the best for last, and it's because you guys are going through monumentous change. I'm so stoked for you guys. Mercury has entered your sign, and there will be, in the coming week, a Mercury-opposed Jupiter moment. So you will have unlocked a new level of integrating your opposite energy. So this is self-mastery. It's an invitation to self-mastery. Not everyone's ready to master themselves, but for those who are, let's read the traditional charge of the star goddess. This just popped out. I who am the beauty of the green earth and the white moon among the stars and the mysteries of the waters, I call upon your soul to arise and come to me, for I am the soul of nature that gives life to the universe. From me all things proceed, and unto me they must return. Let my worship be in the heart that rejoices, for behold, all acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. Let there be beauty and strength, power and compassion, honor and humility, mirth and reverence within you. And you who seek to me know that your seeking and yearning will avail you not unless you know the mystery. For if that which you seek you, may, you find not within yourself, you will never find it outside of yourself. For behold, I have been with you from the beginning, and I am that which is attained at the end of desire. Poem version by Starhawk. Go Starhawk, that was so beautiful. So we know that if we don't see within ourselves, it will never come. We have the Nine of Wands and the Seven of Wands, so it feels like this energy of being able to sit with your energy and reflect upon when you needed to be controlling, when you needed to control the outcome, and you're able to generate this energy that just allows you to naturally lead. And we have temperance, yeah, you're learning to dance with all of your energies, to be at peace with yourself on the inside so that, ooh, I'm getting angel bumps, I'm getting chills, so that on the outside, what you would like to actually have come is aligned with God's will, so that will be done. We're not absorbed in, you know, feeling bigger than other people. We're not absorbed in having more than other people. We are content with who we are on the inside, and this allows for us to adequately use our energies, weaving our own loom, weaving our own fate. So you guys are coming into a whole new arena of personal power, um, and it feels explosive. It feels like you are... bent on sacred knee on hollowed earth. It just feels like you guys are seeing yourselves as larger instruments for the divine and you are completely in a, at a moment or ready to, you're, it's coming upon you to say, I surrender my will. And you'll know what things you've been pushing and pushing and pushing for. And then when your higher self gives you a sign or a sign comes through, this is when you'll know that you are in alignment because you're not having to push anymore. You're able to receive. You are the master of your destiny. Focus on what you want to bring into your life, then let weaving or handicrafts relax your mind. This activity will put you into a trance-like state where ideas flow without thought to weave spirit into matter. As someone who has recently picked up sewing, I can speak to that energy of just allowing for yourself to patch up, you know, things with holes in them, or, you know, if you have kids or a significant other beloved, parents you can help them sew up their stuff or you can make your own soft sculpture for those people who um you know want to get into needlework or um, embroidery now is a good time to do it go get yourself those supplies from the art store be grateful you can do it don't consider it trash or you know stuff that you're just going to allow to collect dust because you won't you can even do um that finger knitting which i love it's pretty easy it's like braiding um, maybe you can braid someone's hair or your own hair if that's not something you're into. We have air. Um, and that 28, It's just, the sky is filled with planets in the third decade. So at the start of the week, there is a Mar Mars-Pluto opposition, and there is a Jupiter-Venus opposition. That's so interesting. I just noticed this for your reading, so kudos. We're on, we're on the mark. Um, and we need a Kali Oracle card for this because it feels big. And this integration that's going to be so essential to this time, I hope that you guys are doing that weaving of some kind or finding ways to transcribe your thoughts into written form. Um, people used to have like secretaries and or scribes who would write down exactly what happened and what went on. 
So there, there's a level to allowing technology to be an aid, a guide, an assistant, um, and to, of course, have your own ideas and to sit in meditation so that you're not being used by technology is something that you are utilizing. We have Kama of Kali. Okay. And at the end of the week, Mercury does move to 10, 10 degrees, so it's important that you guys allow for um, your thoughts to have more grace in their delivery. So maybe at the start of the week you have like a rough draft of something. Give yourself that time to just get everything out. And at the end of the week, it's okay to take a time to revise, to edit, um, to participate in some sort of circle where you share and you get feedback. But I would say save it until the end of the week as our inner world, you guys are getting clear on your inner world and how you think and what you're thinking about and what that does for you. Because we could think ourselves into madness, we could think ourselves into our heart. It's all about where we are aiming that focus, where we are aiming our intention. So, Kama of Kali, she's completely and utterly in love with your divine essence and in her love bestows endless gifts. Your path need not be one of endless effort. Connecting with pleasure as a path of personal empowerment with an intention to bring spiritual beliefs to the collective through softening and opening your heart is an act of worshiping the divine feminine. Relax into the presence of what is. As you slow your pace, it makes swifter progress. I love that you guys got the charge of the star goddess and now worship of the divine feminine. Um, God does have a female aspect. Okay, so for anyone who's scared from what I just said, don't be scared because how could we have been created by something that doesn't already possess all of our qualities, you know? Kama is a Sanskrit word that refers to the sweet stuff of life, pleasure, emotional fulfillment, and being completely present so we can experience life through all of the senses. So it's also sensuality and physical vibrancy. Without the quality of Kama, our experience of life can become dry, bleak, and intimidating. A joyless existence with simplicity, more tasks can be completed. Wait, a joyless existence. More tasks to be completed. So it's like filling your plate with tasks, assignments, no breaks. If we're feeling exhausted, lacking in the qualities of delight and sacred lightness of the heart, then we have become deficient in kama, sacred pleasure. In the realm of the goddess, the enjoyment of life is a sacred act of devotion, gratitude, and celebration. I'm getting this re remembrance of working for someone whose name was Kama, and I worked at a restaurant before I was waitressing um, as a host, and it was like stone floors, I was super bored, um, but it, it paid my rent. So I, I did it when I was living in New York. And I would just watch the uh, manager of this restaurant like eat the most decadent steak and just, you know, for the employees we were given like fried chicken and finger, you know, chicken and french fries. So it was just like, you know, the difference between palate expectation or the budget spent on like the common wage employee. Um, and that delight that is something that I longed for and then turned away from with a plant-based lifestyle. It's so funny how our trajectory can shift and even our desires can shift as we make conscious choices and we come into presence with meditation, prayer, solitude, um, pleasure, real pleasure. And then finding out maybe that pleasure or in Russian it's called kaif, you know, this this luxury of being alive doesn't mean that you want the same things all the time. You're allowed to change, and change is a sign of growth. In the realm of the goddess, the enjoyment of life is a sacred act of devotion, gratitude, and celebration. In the throes of profound challenge and transformation, we can feel disconnected from our joyfulness. It's as though we, it were akin to the bright days of summer, as we are midwinter, wondering how it ever was that we could frolic about in barely anything when we now feel the need to cover ourselves with abundant, protective layers. And I almost feel like there's a level of coziness to that, so, you know, take, take it as you see it. This is to be expected during times of intense suffering when we are dealing with an issue that has elicited grief or anger. Yet, if we allow our minds to remain open to the possibility of joyfulness and pleasure, 
They can find their way through, like the sun breaking through clouds, to bring us comfort. The oracle can indicate not only a more pleasurable way of being as a part of your future, but also an offering of pleasure now, even if you are struggling to ease the strain to make the way easier for overall. Accessing pleasure requires embodiment, a connection with the senses and the subtle nuances of feeling and beauty. Through embodiment, it's easier to receive healing. It can manifest through the uplifting scent of aromatherapy, the warmth of a shower, the gratitude for a safe and comfortable place to sleep, the sumptuousness of warm clothes or a satisfying meal, the delight of playful silliness in animals, the nutty sense of humor of a beloved human, the simple appreciation for the flow of the breath, or through the openness of being that spontaneously occurs in response to an expansive vista of trees and mountains. Kama is a special spiritual practice of presence that leads us into joy, even ecstasy and bliss. It's the juiciness of feeling truly alive. If we have a complicated or confused attitude towards pleasure, the natural need for it can be denied or repressed. Bingo, I've lived that so I can tell you the tale. Yet, it will not disappear. It will arise in some indulgence, addiction, or peculiarity of behavior, so like fetish, um, which creates suffering because it's not the natural expression of the natural need. The Kali of Kama helps us reconnect to our need for pleasure and its healthy expression. The oracle speaks of a gift entering your life from the will of the goddess. It's an invitation to relax and receive. Okay, so this teaching is not about becoming hedonistic or pursuing pleasure at any cost without wisdom or benefit. Instead, the oracle asks us to engage with pleasure as an act of worshiping the goddess. When divine worship is genuine, it doesn't add to the suffering of the world, but adds relief. To understand this, we can give up the notion of pleasure as selfish and begin to associate it with the sacred. This oracle brings comfort. It speaks of the forthcoming grace of pleasure in your life, in your capacity to truly be with it as an act of blissful divine devotion. Okay? Be with your pleasure. And I would even say, because I've spoken to this in Pisces reading, and maybe I think Gemini's too today, meditation. I just started with Sadhguru's 48-day mandala, um, where we meditate. Um, and you can go 90 days if you just want to do it once a day, but twice a day, it's like a mental flossing. You know, think about the last time you flossed your teeth and how clean you felt. Maybe you just did it. Maybe you're doing it as you watch me, which, hello, happy teeth. I'm sure you feel good. Um, it's like getting the plaque and gingivitis off the things that our toothbrush can't reach. And, you know, 18 minutes a day, if you're present during those 18 minutes or even attempt it, you will feel a lot more nourished throughout your day by the simple acts of kindness that you might overlook because you're fixed on bigger problems or major challenges that are a, um, a juncture, I guess, in your life, like a right or left turn. Play. Oh, have fun. Celebrate. Don't be so serious. Yeah, that's where meditation, I think, also invites us to dance with life, to really um, understand that we are here as embodied souls, lights in a physical body. And no matter what has transpired, the clarity that will come to us through this week with meditation and play, playing, you know, thinking about 48 days of like, this is my ticket to freedom or something like that. If, if not meditation, walking meditation, something to liberate yourself from where you've been maybe feeling fixed or stuck or limited or like you can't really be your true self. Stop taking life so seriously. Your spirit needs to have some fun. The more you play, the more inspiration will follow. So take time out to do something without being attached to the outcome. That's also where this loom might come in handy. You are being called to rest and play, to learn to have more fun. Do something that makes you laugh. The best medicine around. Call up a friend that you can be silly with. Take your inner child on a date. The more you switch off your mind, the more room your spirit has to whisper and guide. When we do things without being attached to the outcome, ideas, clarity, guidance, and solution have the space to drop in. The left and right hemispheres of the brain can begin talking to each other. Make play a compulsory part of your day. Schedule it. Spend more time doing things just because you love to do them, just because they bring you joy and light you up. If you follow what lights you up, you will light up the world without even trying. For when you are lit up, you are in your spirit, and when you are in your spirit, you fall into flow with life. How do you play? What do you have to do to have fun? What lights you up? 
If you've been working hard lately, it's time for you to celebrate how far you've come, all that you've achieved. Don't rush onto the next thing. Take a moment to throw a party, go on a vacation, or have some fun. Something that occurred to me is that this is the ninth house and this is the seventh house energy. So in this ninth house energy of you with the sun soon to enter Sagittarius, um, it's currently in your 12th house. Your relationships may have been a lot like this, you know, everyone grasping for power, people wanting to peacock and show that they're more bigger, better, stronger, more deserving of uh, recognition or belonging or community than maybe someone who's down here who doesn't have the, um, the need, you know, you see this person's kind of calm and maybe has their salamander because they understand the trial by fire energy. Well, this person has fire spewing out of their mouth. They're taking themselves too seriously. So you're coming into an understanding of who you are and who you've been maybe in relationships and letting yourself clear the slate to drop into yourself with that practice, whatever it is for you. Uh, make it sacred, you know, give yourself kudos, give yourself grace if you don't figure out what it is that you want to do right now. Or if you're already doing it, celebrate how much you've given yourself, how much time, energy, and investment you've put into yourself. Because it always returns tenfold when we're able to pour joyfully from a full, overflowing cup, Sagittarius. So, real quick, before the end of my reading with you all, um, Jupiter Day is Thursday, so let's look at Thursday. Sun at 16 degrees, Scorpio, in your 12th house. So you might get a divine symbol. You might get a sign to just activate yourself with meditation or with a vacation or a break or a reprieve. Mercury will be at 6 degrees, Sagittarius. So in your inner world, your thoughts are clarifying. Venus will be at 25 degrees, Sagittarius. So there are some sevens in the sky. Um, Queen Kunx energy with Taurus having Uranus at 25 degrees and you having Venus at 25 degrees. So let me make sure it's not a square. Venus, Quincunx, Uranus. So there is this energy of innovative change into your daily life, your routines, how you can give yourself this play or this liberty or this freedom, which, you know, even though meditation might have a lot of associations with it, when you sit and you're able to tell yourself, I'm not this body, I'm not this mind, Sadhguru offers like a guided you know, six minutes so that when I was like, you know, checking out the sky, like talking to myself, having my thoughts, I was like, oh, let's get back into the meditation. So it doesn't distance me from what my intention was, was which was to sit, which today was my first day. As you guys are watching this, I'm probably on day, I don't know, two, maybe three. Um, but it feels like on Thursday, November 7th, those sevens, will be giving a major soul awakening. Mars will move to one degree Leo. So that's in your ninth house. And maybe you will start to see your heart-centered motives and passions as the way forward, Sag. So give yourself the time and the space this week to get clear on your thoughts. Morning pages, I can't speak more highly of. I hope you take notes during this and whatever comes to you, you write it down and you revisit it when the time is divine. If you guys want to go deeper into this energy, check out your ninth house and check out your seventh house readings for the week ahead to my subscribers sun moon rising will get you right it will put you in the place where you have a lot of understanding of maybe your own motives what's going on for you from a different perspective which i'm glad to offer until next time all of my aloha